ladies and gentlemen, it would be fair to say that uh, the, the London, indeed the UK, is now regaining the crown it first acquired in the 17th century as the scientific capital of the world. And if you look back to the 17th century, late 17th century, how can you remember how we won that, that uh, position? It was because of the, the, the cluster effect of the experimental virtuosi and natural philosophers who congregated around the coffee shops in London and who struck sparks of each other and uh, emulated each other in their desire for the, gr the greatest breakthrough. And you remember the Wren and Boyle and Hook and Newton and, uh, and Flamsteed. And, uh, and, they, and they, nothing propinks like propinquity, somebody once said. And it was their propinquity to each other that led to the, the breakthroughs that they achieved. And they, of course, like many academics, today sometimes claimed credit for ideas that weren't entirely uh, their own, but none, that, that, that didn't matter. And the, the most, perhaps the, mo the most underrated of them all, in my view, was a guy called Robert Hooke, about whom uh, you will find a very interesting chapter in Johnson's Life of London, available <laughs> at all good bookshops. And uh, <laughs> it, it, well, it, old Hooke, he, he discovered the sash window, the air gun, and of course, Hooke's Law of Springs. Anybody know what Hooke's Law of Springs? Uh, Henry Mackle, uh, any, 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 uh, 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 any, Hook's Law of Springs? What is Hook's Law of Springs? Tensio ut extensio. Oh, tensio ut extensio. Well, that's almost exactly right. I thought it was ut tensio sic vis. But there you go. I'm sta I, sta I, stand, I stand correct. I'm sure, I'm sure you're right. Uh, a very valuable thing to know if you need uh, to make a spring. And anyway, <laughs> Hook, Hook and these other virtuosi were, were much much mocked in their day. And one evening, Hook went, went to see a play called the, the Virtuoso, and he was absolutely shattered because it turned out to be a satire on himself and on his, on his life. And he saw this guy who was obviously meant to be him, Hook, performing all sorts of ludicrous experiments, making a, a frog fly with the, with the assistance of of, of butterflies or something, and, and receiving a, and, and human beings receiving transfusions of animal organs, which is like the sort of thing they do nowadays in Cambridge, I understand, uh, very, very successfully called xenotransplantation nowadays. But anyway, uh, it was totally ludicrous, the audience thought, and the, the climactic moment is when the, the hook scientist figure is being mocked and abused by a bunch of weavers who are protesting at the invention of, this, of, of, of whatever it is that they is putting them out of work. And he, he comes to the balcony, and he tries to reason with them all. And he says, hear me, gentlemen. We virtuosi have never invented anything useful in our lives. I've never invented an engine in all my life. We never do anything useful. Tis not our way, he said. And that, you see, is very, uh, has been for a long time the charge made against science here in London, n'est-ce pas? Because uh, for too long, uh, I, that has been the, the criticism. We've got the finest mind, 78 Nobel Prize winners here in, uh, in London, the greatest universities. We've got all the tax credits you could possibly want. We've got a 10% uh, tax on all profits arising from patents. 225%, that's amazing. 225% uh, tax break for R&D for uh, SMEs, huge tax advantages, and then you've got this extraordinary constellation of institutions running along the, the Euston Road, uh, the Marlborough Road. Uh, here we are at one end uh, in, in White City. Uh, it's like Orion's Belt. We welcome in, in the middle, and, uh, and, and you see all that sort of stuff. We're going to get this wrong now. Uh, <laughs> but, and, and then the crit on the other, and then the, the Olympic Park, of course. Uh, we have to add several stars to uh, Orion's Belt. Uh, by the time we, we finished. 700,000 people working in the sector, and then the amazing the presence on either end, of course, of Oxford and, and Cambridge. And yet, in spite of all that talent, in spite of having this huge natural market in the NHS, uh, we haven't yet been as successful as some other cities in converting those breakthroughs into cash and in creating the kind of startups that we want. Would, I, would you not agree? And that is, why that, that is why we have decided to help and to set up uh, MedCity. And as Kit has rightly said, there will be a concierge service. We will try to champion, uh, help you to champion 
Med City uh, abroad, champion the life sciences in uh, London and indeed across the southeast. And I just want to say, by the way, to all those who think that you're hearing a little too, a bit too much these days about London and the southeast, what is good for this part of the UK economy is good for the whole UK economy. And it is an absolute illusion to think that you can somehow uh, benefit uh, other parts of the UK by starving this sector, this world-leading sector of cash and of investment. And I think that would be the totally the wrong approach. I am full of confidence. When I look at what is happening in this sector, I am full of confidence. And it is growing, I think, faster than any other sector in the London economy. It's gone up by 21% in the last uh, 10 years. And I've just had the privilege of having my brain uh, scanned or something like that. I don't know exactly what it was. There's a brilliant, a brilliant company next door called Imanova, which is the product of a union between uh, Kings, UCL, and Imperial, I think. Uh, and a, a new venture of the kind that they said was impossible three years ago. They have come together in order to produce an extremely unattractive looking picture of my head. Uh, which, which I don't know what the purpose of that picture was, but I'm sure that it is in some way going to contribute to a scientific breakthrough in the future. And you can all laugh, but they laughed at Hook, remember? They laughed at Hook, didn't they? And then what happened in the decades after those virtuosi fossicked around in London? What happened? The Industrial Revolution, wasn't it? Unless I've got my history wrong. <laughs> it was, and they invented the seed drill and the steam engine and the coal furnace and various other vital appliances whose names momentarily escape me, but which put, Britain, which put Britain at the forefront of the global economy. And we are today standing on the verge of just such an industrial revolution, in my view. And uh, I believe this city is going to lead the world again, because it is the scientific capital of the world. Never forget, where was the first cash machine? Invented. Where was the, who, which London borough, in which London borough was the first cash machine situated, does anybody know, apart from Kit? Enfield. Enfield, that's correct. Absolutely. Where was the magnetic resonance indicator first turned on, whatever you do with it? Anybody know which London borough? Come on, Sutton. There you go, 1967, Sutton. Where, where was, come on, here's an easy one, in which, where was penicillin discovered? Where was penicillin? Prade Street, in Prade Street in Paddington, a very useful thing to have. After night out in Prade Street, there's much, 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 much where, where was, where was the, where was, and what was the most important, of all the breakthroughs that this, the, the Southeast, I should talk about, the, what, of all the great breakthroughs that the Southeast cluster has produced in the last 200 years, which was the most significant in changing our view of man's place in the universe? Come on. Vaccines? No, I wouldn't say that. vaccines. A, you know, uh, Hippocrates had vaccines. Uh, DNA. 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 Uh, even more, even more fundamental than, than DNA, I would say. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> in my view, uh, because this is a point that is still hotly contested. In, in, in hotly, this is a point that is still hotly contested in many of the uh, in many parts of America, which is our closest rival. Uh, in this matter, and, and, and that is, of course, the theory of evolution. And where was Charles Darwin when uh, there floated into his head uh, the theory of evolution? Where was he sitting? He was sitting in Bromley, of course. And when you go to Bromley and meet the people of Bromley and you behold their natural, physical, intellectual, and aesthetic advantages, you understand <laughs> why, Darwin, why Darwin postulated the doctrine of natural selection and the survival of, of the fittest. And where was, where, was, where was the first ever Xbox based, so I tell you it was, based, it was an ex, ex, the first ever Xbox based head scanner invented. I just told you, it was here <laughs> in West London, invented by Imanova and thoroughly useful it is going to be. And uh, I hope very much therefore you will support the efforts of MedCity, all that we are trying to do to lengthen London's lead, not just as the financial capital world, not just as the cultural, the artistic capital world, but increasingly as the scientific and above all the life sciences capital of Europe, if not the world. Thanks very much for listening this morning. Thank you. Thank you.